September 16th of last year on the Washington Mall. Clearly the Washington Mall in Washington DC is a place where people uh, love to protest and demonstrate and on that day there were two groups. One was the Mother of All Rallies Patriot Unification Gathering and the other was Black Lives Matter of Greater New York. Now I think you can imagine that as the newspapers reported this was a pretty tense situation. The two groups were shouting at each other, they were getting closer together, and for a while it looked like some very bad things might be about to happen. But instead something very interesting happened. This man is Tommy Gunn. Pretty clearly he's the leader of the Mother of All Rallies Patriot Unification Group. This man is Hank Newsom. Equally obviously he is the leader of the Black Lives Matter group. Tommy Gunn invited the Black Lives Matter Hank Newsom up onto the stage. Basically what he said was, we are going to give you two minutes on our platform, meaning the mother of all rallies platform, to say, to give your message. Because it doesn't matter if they agree with you or not, you have a right to speak your message. Now that right there is a pretty courageous thing to do. And unsurprisingly, there's Newsom speaking, there's Tommy Gunn. Unsurprisingly, um, they took him up on it. He took him up on it. He started out by saying that he's really glad that he lives in America because in America, when something is broken, we have the opportunity to fix it. And at that point, somebody in the crowd shouted out, all lives matter. And Newsom said, you're right, my brother, you are right. All lives matter. But when black lives are lost, there is no justice. And in order to make America great, we have to do it together. And he went on to speak probably for more than his allotted two minutes. Um, and at the end of it, people were applauding. At the end of it, people were starting to have conversations with each other. People were starting to see each other as people instead of as a member of that group over there that we don't like. So much so that the people filming and taking pictures and the news reports show that, I don't know that the gap necessarily completely disappeared, but who would have imagined this? Photo ops with, I believe that is Newsom, and holding the child of one of the Mother of All Rallies members. We do it together. We can't do this bridging the gap alone. And this is, when I say that I have been doing this work my entire life, I really mean it. Because when, <laughs> the reality is my parents should never have gotten together. They should never have gotten married. I'm really glad they did or I wouldn't be here standing in front of you. <laughs> But they were not well suited. And probably before I was born, but certainly after I was born, they argued. But somehow, even then, I didn't have the words for it, but even then I knew that we have to see each other in order to be able to bridge the gap. And as a two-year-old, you can all say, ah. <laughs> I would, when they started arguing, I would turn their faces to, to see toward each other, to see each other. Because I knew, even then, that this is what we need. And so when I say I do this work of communication and conflict transformation and better conversations for my entire life, it's really true. Ozan Barrel is an immigrant to this country. He has a very interesting career path. He started out as a real honest-to-God rocket scientist. He is now a lawyer, a law professor, and an author. So just because you start out in one direction, you can move in a lot of other directions. And he says, if you disagree with someone, it's not because you're right and they're wrong. It's because they believe something that you don't believe. They have a different perspective that you're missing. And of course, that works the other way around too, right? You believe something they don't believe, and you have a perspective that they don't have. I want to be clear in what I'm going to say here. I'm going to give you a couple of practical tips in a minute. 
But this is not about being a welcome mat. It's not about being a doormat. It's not about acquiescing, as some of our other speakers have said here today. It is not of empathy and understanding are just empathy and understanding. They are not, you know, I now flip my beliefs around and suddenly agree with you. They're just understanding. They're getting a handle on that different perspective that Barrel talks about. So I'm going to bet that if you are lucky enough in this moment to not have anybody in your life where there is a painful gap, and the reality is if it's just somebody we don't really care about, it's like, oh, okay, we disagree, fine. Move along, nothing to see here. <coughs> but we all have at least had somebody in our lives, and we undoubtedly all will have someone in our lives, if we don't right at this moment, where there is that painful gap, where it matters that we are not in a good relationship with them, whether it's a colleague at work, or it's a friend, or a family member, it hurts, right? So what do we do about this? And I will bet that if I'm standing here talking to you about being the one to take that first step, at least some of you are thinking, why should I be the one? <laughs> and I will bet that if that other person you're thinking of right now was sitting here in the room today, they would be sitting here thinking, why should I be the one? Because, I mean, they're the one who's wrong. They're the one who did something, not me. But if it hurts, if that gap is there and it hurts in whatever way, whether professionally or personally, who else? Who else is going to do it but you? And why not you? If you're not familiar with Brene Brown's work, she is a researcher, PhD scholar, uh, author. She has a number of TED Talks. I see many of you nodding. If you haven't seen her TED Talks or encountered her books, I recommend them. She's a researcher on shame and vulnerability. We all know about that, right? You can't get to courage without walking through vulnerability. Why not? Because courage means that there is fear involved. And if we're not going to face the vulnerability, then we can stay safe. But if we're going to be courageous and be the one to set foot on that bridge first, we have to go through the vulnerability. This is a question that is about to come up on the screen here. There we go. Why would a reasonable person act, speak, or think that way? I ask my clients to ask themselves that. And their immediate reaction is, but they're not reasonable. And I'm like, I know. I know they're not reasonable. But pretend they are. Let's pretend. Let's tell stories. And this is a step, this is a question you can ask yourself without ever making commitment, needing to make a decision that you are, in fact, going to go talk to that other person. It will give you the different perspective that Veral talks about. Why in the world would a reasonable person behave the way they're behaving? It cracks the door just a little bit and gives you a window into what might be going on in that other person's experience that would make them behave in this way that seems so weird to you. The next thing we need to do is think about what you want. And we then have to not just think about it, but take paper and pencil, not a computer, but paper and pencil, because there is something very powerful about the act of writing. And in writing down what you want, you get so much more clear than you, uh, you we think we know what we want, right? Write it down, and you will find that you didn't really know what you want. And don't go overboard here. Let's work in the realm of possibility. The other person is not going to fling themselves at, their, at your feet and say, I was so wrong. You are so right. I am so sorry. It isn't going to happen. So when you write down what you want, think about within the realm of possibility, how do we start to bridge the gap and heal the relationship? And think also about what can you do together? Because as Newsom said, we do this together. And I will be the first one to tell you that if the other person is not willing to play along, it isn't going to happen. But somebody has to take the first step on the bridge. You and them and the gap. You've done your prep work 
and you've made the decision that you are, in fact, going to take the next step on the bridge and ask them to talk about it. Do not go running up to them and say, we have to talk, because they are going to go, oh, no, here they come again. They're going to want to argue with me. They're going to want to convince me that they're right. You've done the prep work. They haven't, right? Instead, you know, this gap between us, this problem between us, this disagreement that we have, I don't like it. It hurts. It bothers me. Can we schedule a time? Can we put a time on the calendar where we can get together and just see what we can do about this? I'm not going to try to convince you that I'm right and you're wrong, but let's just talk about it. Neutral territory is always a good thing. Coffee shop, not your office, not their office, not either of your homes, because that's territoriality is alive and well in our psyches. And we don't have time today to go into the neuroscience of it. I'm happy to talk about it for as long as anybody wants, because I love this stuff. But the reality is that when the emotional processing centers of our brain have control, the logical processing centers have no say in the matter. And I can prove this to you very quickly because if you have ever been in a situation where you are upset and somebody said, calm down, it's okay, you're overreacting, it makes it worse, right? I, I see people <laughs> nodding, yeah. It just makes it where you get more angry. This question asked with sincerity is transformative. First off, it shows you really care because you do have to ask with sincerity. It shows that you really want to know what their experience is. And secondly, it takes that emotional layer and it forces them to come up into the logic because now they have to do a compare and contrast. Out of all the stuff in this really crappy situation, what's the worst? So you have now further opened <coughs> the door to a real conversation. Now, I can't tell you where it's going to go from there. I don't know you. Well, I know some of you, but I don't know you. I don't know the situation. I don't know the other person. But you have set yourself up to close the gap. I want to challenge you, as Jackie did earlier this morning, what action are you going to take? Even if it's just to ask yourself that very first question of why would a reasonable person behave this way, what action are you going to take? Don't let this happen. Don't. Instead, as Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Change is possible. The gap can be bridged. Healing can happen. Relationships can be reconnected. If they can do it, so can you. Woo